We've had a lot of fun using the comparison test, but it doesn't always work. Consider this series, the sum of terms 1 over 3 to the n minus 1. You might think of using the comparison test here and comparing this series to the series whose terms are 1 over 3 to the n. But the comparison test won't work in this situation because this series, adding 1 over 3 to the n, that's convergent. It's, of course, a geometric series with r equal to one-third. But the terms of our series are just a little bit bigger because the denominator, on account of the minus one, is a little bit smaller. Since our terms are a little bit bigger than those of a convergent series, the comparison test doesn't let us conclude anything. We need our terms to either be smaller than those of a convergent series or bigger than those of a divergent series. Of course, this is fairly unsatisfactory because this series is so similar to one over three to the n, it feels that it should be pretty easy to show that it's convergent. And it is easy, but we do need a different test. We need a test called the limit comparison test. Here is the limit comparison test. Suppose we have these two series consisting of positive terms. If the limit as n goes to infinity of a n divided by b n is equal to c, where c is a finite positive number, then either both series must converge or both series diverge. So if the limit is some finite positive number, then the series must have the same behavior. You can see with the series we were thinking about before, even though the terms of our series are a little bit bigger than those of the familiar convergent geometric series, if we were to divide these terms by each other and let n go to infinity, the limit would surely be one because the minus one in the denominator is really not doing anything as n gets very large. That's the idea. Before we do a couple examples of using the limit comparison test, let's prove it. The proof relies on the comparison test. So we're supposing that we've got these series a n and b n with positive terms and that the limit of their ratio is c, a finite positive number. Then we're going to let little m and big M be positive numbers such that C lies in between them. Now we know that a n over b n converges to C, so for sufficiently large values of n, a n over b n would have to be between little m and big M. This is because a n over b n, since it converges to C, it eventually gets as close to C as we would like it to be. So let's just say it's so close to C that it's also between little m and big M. For those sufficiently large values of n, where a n over b n is between little m and big M, we could multiply the whole inequality by b n to have that little m b n is less than a n is less than big M b n. Then if the series adding up the b n's is convergent, then certainly the sum of the terms m b n is also convergent. You could just pull the m out and you'd have m times a convergent series. But if the sum of the terms m b n is convergent, then so is the sum of the terms a n, because all of those terms, at least after a certain point, are smaller than those terms big M, B, N. So by the comparison test, the series of the A, N terms would have to be convergent as well. On the other hand, if the sum of the B, N's is divergent, then so is the sum of the little m, B, N terms. Again, we could pull the little m out and have m times a divergent series. This would be divergent. But every term a n after a certain point is greater than little m b n. And so by the comparison test, the series adding up those a n's would also have to be divergent. And remember that this inequality supporting the proof is only true for sufficiently large n. But for example, if n had to be greater than 100, this Inequality would be true for all values of n greater than 100, so it would only be a finite number of terms from 1 to 100 for which this inequality might not be true, and a finite number of terms is never going to change the behavior of a series.
So we've seen the limit comparison test, we've seen the proof, let's go ahead and use it for those original pair of series we were looking at. We want to test the series consisting of the terms 1 over 3 to the n minus 1 for convergence or divergence. We're going to use the limit comparison test with a n equals 1 over 3 to the n minus 1, and we'll be comparing it to 1 over 3 to the n. Remember, in the limit comparison test, we've got two series consisting of positive positive terms, we've got one whose behavior we're trying to determine, and then another one that we're trying to compare it to. We need to know the behavior of that other sequence we're comparing to, otherwise the conclusion won't be super useful. Now in our case, we're comparing 1 over 3 to the n minus 1 to 1 over 3 to the n. Of course, we know that the 3 to the n is really the dominant player in this expression, which is how we know to just get rid of the minus 1. Plus, 1 over 3 to the n is a geometric series, so we also know that it is convergent. Hence, we'll be able to make a conclusion based on what we find with the limit comparison test. The limit comparison test says we need to look at the limit as n goes to infinity of the terms of our series divided by the terms of the series we are comparing to. Dividing by 1 over 3 to the n is the same as multiplying by 3 to the n over 1. So this is the limit as n goes to infinity of 3 to the n divided by 3 to the n minus 1. Then we can divide the numerator by 3 to the n and divide the denominator by 3 to the n. When we do that, we get 3 to the n divided by 3 to the n, which is 1 in the numerator. And in the denominator, we have 3 to the n divided by 3 to the n, which is 1, and 1 divided by 3 to the n, which is 1 over 3 to the n. Now, as n goes to infinity, 1 over 3 to the n goes to 0, and so we end up just having 1 over 1, which of course is just 1, a finite positive number. So by the limit comparison test, the behavior of these two series must be the same. We know that this one is convergent, it's a geometric series with r equal to one third, and so indeed our series as suspected is convergent as well. Here's one more example. We're going to test this series for convergence or divergence, and again we'll use the limit comparison test with a n equal to the terms of our series and b n equal to 4 n squared divided by n to the 5 halves, which by the exponent laws simplifies to 4 over n to the 1 half. The way we choose this series to compare to is by looking at the dominant terms. In particular, in this case, that's the highest powers in the numerator and denominator. In the numerator, we see that 4n squared is the highest power, so that's why we're comparing to 4n squared. And in the denominator, it's n to the 5 in a square root, which is the highest power. That's n to the 5 halves, and so that's how we pick the denominator. Now, we also picked that coefficient of 4 from the numerator. We could have left that out if we wanted to in bn, but we'll just go ahead and include it. And again, n squared is n to the 4 over 2, so by our exponent laws, we can subtract that to the denominator and have n to the 1 half in the denominator. So these would be the terms of a p-series where p is equal to 1 half. That's less than 1, and so these would be terms of a divergent series. All right, let's go ahead and evaluate the relevant limit now. Here is the relevant limit. In the numerator, we have a term of our series, and in the denominator, we have the terms of the series that we are comparing to, which, when simplified, is 4 over n to the 1 half. Then, of course, dividing by this fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So in the numerator, we end up having 4n squared plus 2n multiplied by n to the 1 half. And in the denominator, we have 4 times the square root of 3 plus n to the 5. Now, distributing in the numerator, we end up with 4n to the 5 halves plus 2n to the 3 halves. Now, we're going to divide the numerator and the denominator by the highest power of n. The highest power of n is n to the 5 halves. It's in the numerator, and it's also in the denominator, because in the denominator we have n to the 5 in a square root, which is n to the 5 to the 1 half, which is n to the 5 halves. So we're dividing the numerator by the square root of n to the 5, 
which is end of the five halves, and we're dividing the denominator by the square root of end of the five, which again is end of the five halves. 4n to the five halves divided by n to the five halves is 4. 2n to the three halves divided by n to the five halves is 2 over n. And in the denominator, when we divide by the square root of n to the 5, we're really just dividing by n to the 5 inside the square root. Thus, we have 3 over n to the 5 and n to the 5 over n to the 5, which is 1. Now, as n goes to infinity, this term goes to 0 and this term goes to 0. So we're left with 4 in the numerator. And in the denominator, we just have 4 times the square root of 1. This is equal to 4 over 4, which is 1, which of course is a finite positive number. Thus, since the series we compared to is a divergent p series, again with p equal to 1 half, we have that the original series we were looking at must also be divergent by the limit comparison test. For more practice using the limit comparison test, consider joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. I've got another video going over five more problems that you can check out right now. Plus, if you join at the premium tier or above, you can access the lecture notes used in my courses. Anyways, that's the limit comparison test, how to prove it, how to use it, and some nice examples. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Calculus 2 course and Calculus 2 exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching.